fits into my next point really well. The reason you don't see any drone shots here is because we're near a Coast Guard base and you're not allowed to fly here because you're within 1.8 kilometers of the helipad for the Coast Guard. Also, because I lost my drone in a tree and we're gonna go retrieve it right now. Let's go. Says the uh, rotors are at max speed, but it's been running like that for like eight minutes now. You figured it'd shut off. I don't know how to turn it off. Now it's still running up there. We're trying to get it down. Guys, it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another Drone Tips Tuesday. But today comes with a little bit of bad news, as you can tell by the title and the uh, previous little video segment. I lost my drone. So today's video is all about what mistakes I made, how you can avoid them to make sure you keep your drone safe as well as everyone else around you, and show you a little bit of what I did to try and recover it. But first, please join me in a moment of silence for Downy Live Mavic 1. It's official. After at least a half an hour of rock throwing and stick throwing, we haven't made any progress. It stopped yelling at us, basically, uh, but it's still hanging there and it's too far to get. If we think of anything tonight, we may come back, but otherwise, that's it for drone one. All right, we made a stop at the general store, got some cat food and 50 feet of rope. Let's hope this plan works. Okay, we'll get back to the recovery in just a second. I wanna give you guys a little bit of a layout here of what was going on, where I was, and what happened to cause the drone to end up in a tree. So we're outside of a small town in British Columbia called Port Renfrew. We've gone down this logging road. We've now ended up on this bridge, which you can see here. Just past the girls there, you can see we've parked our car over there. Later on, that's where I end up taking the drone off from. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to film around this bridge, but then, this happened. If you ever come to British Columbia, Rain always bring a raincoat, no matter what time of year. Like this that. is our safety beacon, Brian. <laughs> Look for me if you get lost. The rest of us are, oh, you're in bright, you're in bright. The rest of us are in gray and black. We need to work on that team. Torrential downpour and hailing out of nowhere. But then suddenly, and just like that, again, the water, weather changes. Look at this. That's blue sky. So here's what happened and what I did wrong. I start flying along the river and I go into this rock valley canyon type thing. Well, very quickly, I lose transmission. So update, I was flying along the river, flew a little too far or it got out of transmission range. Normally the signal weakens and I can tell it's getting weaker and I'm able to fly it out of there myself. But in this case, it went to black. It said transmission lost. Would you like to return home? So I hit return to home and it came up and I couldn't see anything out of the screen. So I just let it return to home. It's supposed to go up to 60 meters and then down, but it was cruising at 30 and it. Now, normally in a return to home situation, once it gets back into transmission distance, you sort of get uh, the image returns back to your screen and you're able to cancel the return to home and continue to fly normally. But in this case, I wasn't. For some reason, the image was frozen and all these errors were coming up on my remote control. So with me not being able to see on the remote control and take over it myself to fly it back safely, I simply let it return to home. Now here's where I went wrong. Maybe I should have taken the drone off from the bridge, but what I was worried about was setting the home point on the bridge, meaning if the GPS was slightly off, even just by five feet, and in a return to home situation, it might attempt to land it next to the bridge, thus putting it into the water. I didn't want that. So I actually had the drone take off from next to where our car was, which was this big wide spot on this logging road, giving it lots of space to land, take off easily from. What I didn't take into consideration were the height of the trees around us. For some reason came through these trees 
and the sensor didn't detect that they were there. And we could all hear the drone coming and we're waiting. I can't see it on the remote control. And suddenly we hear. It's gonna like burn out the motor anyway. I don't know why it hit this tree. This is not like tiny branches sticking out. This was a big tree, a giant obstacle. The drone ends up being, you know, we guessed about 50 feet in the air, just far enough that we were really having trouble throwing rocks at it. Mm -hmm. So at this point I can see on the remote control, it's having all sorts of errors. It's saying the props have come off. We know it's stuck in a tree and it's revving like crazy. It's either gonna burn out the battery or burn out the motors. So I've sort of considered the drone at this point a write-off, but we still wanna recover it so I can get the footage to show you and learn from the mistakes myself, as well as hopefully maybe recover the battery if it isn't burnt out. When I get a new drone, I now have another spare battery. These guys are now trying to wiggle the birch tree because it's kind of tickling the tree which the drone is stuck in. So we spend over a half an hour trying to throw rocks and throw sticks at this, trying to knock it loose out of the branch, hoping it can fall to the ground. And once we realize the rocks aren't working, we have to come up with a better plan. Hence the cat food and 50 feet of rope. Cat food is a perfect throwing device. It just fits perfectly in the, in the hand. I'm going to tie it and this will be our weight to pull the rope up and over the branch. I think this is gonna work. And if it doesn't, the cat gets fed. Exactly, at least, at least someone will be happy after this. <laughs> this doesn't just pull the tab off and we lose the can. We're gonna tape it down. Okay, this is our throwing device. Looking good. Feels good, looks good. Nice and sturdy. And at the other end, we just have the smaller can of cat food because it's a long way and I don't know, I don't know which oh, one's gonna throw really better, the that. small one or the big one. This is, uh, first of all, this is purely a recovery mission because as you can tell, it rained and snowed last night. So I'm just gonna see if I can get the memory card out of it. Maybe the battery will still work, but I'm pretty sure the drone is toast. Now we're trying to find it. Ground, I think. And I don't oh, see, no, I see oh, it. Is that it there? Yeah. Lower? Oh yeah, there it is. There, it's still hanging. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it right there. One more little slap in the face about us coming to rescue the drone and we drive in across this bridge here and they're literally flying their Mavic right there. I guess it was a good spot to fly. All right, Operation Mavic Recovery. First of all, we need a better name than that. Uh, is in full effect. No. I don't know if that's heavy enough. No. We spent so much time throwing yesterday, we pretty yeah, much wiped our arms. Just skipping those rocks, my arms. <laughs> okay, we're adding more weight to it. Oh my goodness! Ah. That hit the branch. He's going again. He's missing. Oh, Cam. That throw, it's just hanging on a branch's edge by its prop. That's what got going. It's quite far, and we can't climb the tree. We've already looked. They're um, like big Douglas firs with just no branches at the bottom. It's so hard to quit because you, it could be the next one. That was a direct hit! I think it's on there pretty good. Okay, Cam Cam just hit the drone with a stick and it it didn't come down. It's not guys, it's not coming down. This is the face of defeat. And these are just defeat. At least the cat's happy, right? At home. There's one good there's one plus in this story. Someone's a winner today. <laughs> Okay, let's go get some pizza and nachos. I could do something for drone tip Tuesday. Don't fly your drone near a forest. There you go. Yeah, maybe. Or make sure to get a good home base. Yeah. yeah. So if I have any advice for you, it's this. Make sure your home point is a big, clear area for landing and takeoff, and also to avoid having to pay another $1,400 like I just did Make sure the settings for your return to home 
are high enough to clear any possible obstacles in case your sensors malfunction, your camera, your remote control malfunction. Clearly like mine did that day. Hopefully my pain today helps you avoid this in the future. I do drone tips every Tuesday and I've got another one on the way so they'll be back next Tuesday. So you can subscribe by clicking on my face right there because I don't know where I'm going next, but I want you there with me. So thanks for watching guys. See you next time.